Okay, so taking a look at adding or subtracting a constant to a random variable, um, based on the previous slide that we took a look at, adding the same number, which could be positive or negative, in the last case we subtracted $100 to get the profit, to each value of a random variable, it adds or subtracts our measure of A, so in that case we subtracted $100, to the measure of the center, so the mean, the median, the quartiles, and the percentiles all are going to decrease by, in that case, $100. However, when we add or subtract our constant, it doesn't change the measure of spread. So it doesn't change the range, the IQR, the standard deviation. And once again, it does not change the shape. So the shape is going to stay approximately normally distributed. If it's skewed right, skewed left, that will not affect that. All right, so here's just a basic, um, this is sort of a summary of what we've talked about on the last a uh, couple of slides. So if y equals a plus bx is a linear transformation of the variable x, well, what does that mean? So x is sort of like what you're starting with, y is the final answer transformation, b is what you multiplied by, and a is what you added. So if we were to combine the last two from the Pete's Jeep's Pete's Jeep problem, we were multiplying by 150 and then basically subtracting 100 to pay for his expenses. So what does it look like if I have a, a transformation that is both multiplied and added? How do, what does my mean and standard deviation look like? So the probability distribution of y has the same shape. So in all cases, the shape of the distribution is not going to change. So how do we find the new mean? All you're literally going to do is plug in the old mean. You're going to take the old mean all right, once you've taken the old mean, you're going to multiply it by the transformation. So multiply it by $150 um, dollars per person and then subtract the constant of 100. And that's going to tell you what your new mean would be if we're taking a look at the cost plus the profit. To get the standard deviation of the transformation, we're going to take the old standard deviation and multiply it by that constant b, the absolute value of it, because your standard deviation is always positive. Okay, so to get the new one, you just take the old standard deviation, multiply it. Now, why don't we have that a in there? Well, remember that the a doesn't change when we add or subtract something, it doesn't change the standard deviation. So the new standard deviation is just the old standard deviation times what whatever value we multiplied it by. Uh, now, Let's say we're looking at the variance, all right? So if you're given the variance, um, and you'll, you could always find the variance first, take the skirt to get the standard deviation. So let's say that the variance is a plus by, so we've multiplied something and then added a constant. Keep in mind that the variance is the standard deviation squared, therefore we'd have to square the b. So to get the new variance, I'd square the standard deviation and I'd square the value that it's multiplied by, but I wouldn't do anything with a because it, since it doesn't change the standard deviation, it's not going to change the variance, okay? Um, if there is a linear transformation, just remember that the shape is always going to stay exactly the same. Now, linear transformations has, have similar effects on other measures of center or location. So the median, the quartiles, and percentages are all going to follow this rule up here. Multiply by the constant, or sorry, multiply by your constant, and then add or subtract the constant that you have added or subtracted. The spread, or the IQR and the range, are only going to change by the multiplication. Now, whether we're dealing with data or random variables, the effects on linear transformations are the same. So these apply to both discrete and continuous random variables. We don't need to come up with a separate one for continuous, um, only because they this transformations apply to both, and we've kind of already done those in unit two. Okay, so this is just a summary. So what happens when we do a transformation? What happens to the center? If we add or subtract, the mean is increased by that, add or subtracted to the center, and then um, multiplied or divided by a constant, that changes the center. Now, please keep in mind that order is important. You will multiply or divide by the constant first, okay? So if we're getting a new measure of center, then add or subtract, okay? Um, for the shape, they stay the same, all right, when we add or subtract or multiply or divide. For the standard deviation, if we add or subtract, the standard deviation stays the same. If we multiply or divide, the standard deviation is multiplied or divided by the constant. For the variance, same thing, uh, the variance, variance stays the same, um, and then 
if we're adding or subtracting, if we're multiplying or dividing, you square the constant and square the standard deviation. So just remember the mean is changed by multiplying, dividing, and or adding a constant. To get the new mean, order of operations is important. Multiply first, then add or subtract. The standard deviation is only changed by multiplying or dividing by a constant, and the shape is not changed at all. Okay, so let's just take a look at this question. This will be um, a application of transformations. So in a large introductory statistics class, the distribution of raw scores on X, or sorry, a test X, follows the normal distribution, mean of 17.2 and standard deviation of 3.8. The professor decides to scale the scores by multiplying the raw scores by 4 and adding 10. So basically, what is that transformation? Every single score is getting multiplied by 4 and adding 10. One, what I'd like you to do is define the variable y to be the scaled score, find the mean and standard deviation of y, then what is, answer the question, what's the probability that a randomly selected student has a scaled test score of at least 90? So think about which distribution you're going to use. Are you going to use that first one or are you going to use the second one? Use what we did just in the last couple of sections, see how you did, and we'll take a look at the answer. Okay, so let's see what we did. Number one, make sure you define your variable y. y is the scaled score, that's very specific, it is the new mean, new standard deviation, new distribution. It's the scaled score of the randomly selected student. How do we find the mean and standard deviation of y? Please think about the transformation. Now, just I think it's helpful just to write that transformation out. What is it? Think about it in terms of a linear equation. What are we doing? Y is my new scaled score. Well, what did we do? I took 4, I multiplied it by the old score, and then I added 10. Okay, so that tells you what your transformation is. So how do we get the new mean? Well, the new mean, basically, this is helpful because literally all you're going to do is plug the old mean into X. The new mean is literally the same transformation, 10 plus 4 times the old mean. So you're basically just taking that old mean, plugging it into x, boom, away you go. And the reason that we have mean of y and mean of x is because I'm doing the transformation on the mean. So the new mean is 10 plus 4 times the old mean. Now how about the new standard deviation? So the standard deviation of y, remember we don't use the constant, we are just going to take 4 times the old standard deviation plugging our numbers in from our original distribution, okay, we get 78.8 is the new mean and 15.2 is the new standard deviation. Now, our, our distribution y after we've done the scaled scores is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 78.8 and 15.2, okay, and we're going to need that to answer question B because it says what's the probability that a randomly selected student has a scaled test score of at least 90. So we want to use the mean and standard deviation from our y distribution, not our original. This is back to those seven steps we did way back when. So what's the probability? Make sure you're stating y because y is the scaled scores, x is the not scaled, is greater than or equal to 90. All right, so here's my score, shade it in, I want this area over here. Okay, find your z-score, mean, minus your, or sorry, data point, minus your mean, divided by your standard deviation of y. Probability statement was z, plug it on your calculator. So there's a 23.06% chance that a randomly selected student has a scaled test score of at least 90. Okay, so now let's see what happens whenever we actually add two random variables. Let's investigate the result of adding and subtracting random variables. So let's say that X is the number of passengers on a randomly selected um, trip with Pete, and Y is the number of passengers on a randomly selected trip with Aaron's adventures. So we got two, two uh, sort of competing people, people here. We got Pete's Jeep Tours and Aaron's adventures. We're making a new distribution with X plus Y. So basically we're taking the number of passengers from Pete and adding it to the number of passengers of Aaron. So what are the mean and variance of T? Hmm, let's think about that. How can we do this? All right. This is um, Pete's distribution right here, the probability of two, three, four, five, or six passengers, and the probability that each of those occur. We know from previous slides that the mean was 3.75, standard deviation was 1.090. This is Aaron's distribution down here, 
her number of passengers are two, three, four, or five, and her probability of each of those occurring are stated below. Okay, so the mean of Aaron's trips is she takes 3.10 people, and her standard deviation is 0.943. So um, the number of people vary from that mean people of 3.10 by about one person. Now take a look at your distributions. Here's Aaron's number of passengers and her probability of each occurring. Okay, what happens if we add these two distributions together? How many passengers can Pete and Aaron expect on a randomly selected day? So on average, together, how much can we expect them to have? So Pete's average is 3.75 and Aaron's average number of passengers is 3.1. So that means that between the two of them, if I put the two distributions together, they have an average total of 3.75 plus 3.1 or 6.85 passengers per trip between between the two of them. So what that tells us is for any two random variables, if we add the two distributions together, then to get the mean of the combined distribution, so Aaron plus Pete's, to get the new mean or the new expected value, I just add the means of the two separate distributions. So the mean of the sum of several random variables is the sum of their means. So if I'm adding up a whole bunch of random variables, let's say I want to find the mean of the apples and the oranges and the bananas, and I want to put them all in a basket, I could add up the mean of the apples plus the oranges plus the um, bananas, and that would give me my new mean total. So now the next question is, so we found out the mean, how, how, how can we do this with our standard deviation? So how much variability is there in the total number of passengers who go on Pete's and Aaron's tours on a randomly selected day? All right, so we, we know what the mean is if we combine the two, but what's the standard deviation between the two of them on average? How is it going to differ from 6.85 passengers per trip? Okay, now in order order to determine the probability or to do any combining of random variables with two different distributions, they have to be independent random variables. All right, if they're not independent, you can't do the, you cannot find the spread. So if knowing whether any of event involving X alone has occurred tells us nothing about the occurrence of event Y, then they're independent. So basically that means X and Y, X does not affect Y, Y does not affect X. If they're independent, then we can find the standard deviation of the combined random variables. Probability models assume independence when the random variables describe outcomes that appear unrelated to each other. So Aaron's tours and Pete tours are probably unrelated to each other, therefore they are independent. Okay, so oftentimes the question will state that it's independent, but you should always ask whether the assumption of independence seems reasonable. In this case, it's reasonable to assume that X and Y are independent since the siblings operate their tours in different parts of the country. So Aaron is maybe, if we're talking about um, New Zealand, maybe Aaron's on the North Island and Pete's on the South Island. Okay, so two different islands. If they were in the same city, then they might not be independent because one might choose Pete over Aaron's tours. So you want to think about that. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to T is the combination of Pete plus Aaron. So what are all of the possible combinations of values of X? So basically what we're doing here is this just is all the possible combinations of two people in both of them. Okay, the probability that it occurs. So this is saying Pete has two, okay, so this table could be kind of confusing. Pete has two, Aaron has two. Pete has two, Aaron has three. Pete has two, Aaron has four. Pete has two, Aaron has five. Pete has three, Aaron has two. Pete has three, Aaron has three. Pete has three, Aaron has four. Pete has three, Aaron has five. So on and so forth. That's what the rest of this table is. So this is basically just telling us all the possible combinations. And then here's the probability of Pete having two, the probability of um, Aaron having two. They have a total of four people. What is their um, probability of that occurring? Since they're independent, I can multiply them together. And we did that for each value in the table here. All right, so how are we going to get the new standard deviation? So remember, how do we get a standard deviation? Well, we take the value, okay, our specific total, minus 
the average, square it, and multiply it by the probability that that occurs. So in this case, if we take a look, 4, we learned from the previous slide, subtracting the 6.85 was the average between the two, square it, and then multiply it by the probability that that occurred. Okay, keep doing that over and over again. That's going to give us our variance.